I've always been attracted to waterfalls because I'm fascinated by how they demonstrate the power of water. So after three weeks of planning, I managed to visit the Ohrabis Falls National Park. After Ohrabis, I thought of going north to the Khalakhadi Frontier National Park. But instead, I decided to go west to visit Springbok and the Namakwa National Park. Firstly, I wanted to explore Glenzia, which is a quaint seaside mining town. After four nights of camping, I was destined to spend my last night in some comfort at the Red Sands Country Lodge in Kuruman. Thanks for joining me on this solo journey, the Northern Cape Escape. To get to Ohrabis Falls from Pretoria, I'm taking the N14 West for a good 940 kilometers, which should take about 10 hours without any wandering stops. Fortunately, there isn't much traffic on the roads because it's Freedom Day in South Africa, which is a public holiday. But there are many large trucks on the N14 route because the main economic activities in these parts of the country are mining agriculture. Most of the N14 cuts across large stretches of open fields, but as you enter the Northern Cape, the route becomes more scenic with mountains and blue skies in the backdrop. The drivers are also quite friendly along this route. After a good 920 kilometers, I have finally reached Ohrabis and the scenery is nothing less than breathtaking. After the first night at Ohrabis, I'm planning on spending the day on a game drive, some hiking and doing some wheeling. First on the agenda, game view. Looks like I'm not the only one taking some time alone. <laughs> Next stop, Moon Rock. Moon Rock is a large exfoliation dome. At the summit, your reward is a 360 degree vista of the park. Spectacular.
Next up, the Orange River Gorge. If you visit Okhrabis Falls National Park, you can also stay at the Orange River Gorge Cottage, which is very secluded but has the benefit of these spectacular views. Next up, Echo Corner. Let me test the acoustics at Echo Corner. Next up, the Swartranta. These beautiful black hills are another distinct landmark in Okhrabis. Next up, the Wilderness Road. This is a 94 km 4x4 trail with a scenic picnic spot and a braai area along the way. The route should take about 6 hours to complete, but eventually I had to change plans because I had trouble with my underbody protection. Next up, the Quiver Tree Sanctuary. I'm very fascinated by trees. These quiver trees are quite interesting because they look like the offspring of a tree and a succulent. Just when I was grumbling about not seeing much game today, I met these guys running from a storm just before I entered the Quiver Tree Sanctuary. The Chemsbok or South African Oryx is a large antelope that is native to the arid regions of Southern Africa. This species is depicted on the Namibian coat of arms and the country is home to over 370,000 Chemsbok. Final stop for the day, the Quiver Tree Sanctuary. I just love these trees. After two nights here, I still haven't seen the actual Okhrabis Falls. The name Okhrabis is derived from the Khoi people's term Ukurebas, which means place of great noise, which is caused by the powerful flow of water.
next chapter springbok springbok is the largest town in the namakulan area in the northern cape the town was called springbok fontein until 1911 when it was shortened to springbok and it sits at the intersection between n7 and n14 national routes it's my first time here and i think springbok has some of the friendliest people in south africa While in Springbok, I've been able to get my underbody protection fixed, so I'm excited for the next leg of my journey, and I'm ready to explore Glenzie and Namakwa National Park while I'm here. to cleanse him I spotted this abandoned house I'm always curious about abandoned settlements because they are a caricature of past life and this ruin has an interesting story to tell from what I can get Corrugations on the road between Springbok and Clanes here are quite bad, so it's time to drop tire pressures so I can have a less bumpy ride. While I'm worried about the ride comfort, I'm locally sure I'm going to stop. Apparently, there's a better route, but I should have taken a left turn a few kilometers back for that one. Next stop, Glenzie. Glenzie is a small village on the west coast of the Northern Cape at the north of the Buffalo River. It's approximately 70 kilometers southeast of Port Nolloth and 100 kilometers west of Springbok. This was previously a mining town known for its diamond mining operations until the 2000s. The Buffalo River flows through Glenzie. But most of the time it's just a dry river bed and only flows approximately every 10 years. Glenzie is surrounded by the semi-desert and the Atlantic Ocean. Next stop, Namakwa National Park. After some dusty and corrugated roads I finally arrived at Namakwa National Park but apparently I'm visiting during the off peak season. The locals tell me that the best time to visit this part of the country is during August is during August to September when the flowers are blooming. 
At this time of the year, it's just mainly dust and scenic mountains. The views from up here are spectacular. Next up, the Caracal Eco Route. The Caracal Eco route allows you to experience a wide range of Namaqua habitats from the mountains to the coast. The section I'm driving through is the detour via the Volta Perde Hoop Pass. I really enjoy time spent alone in the bush, but the one schlep of traveling alone is having to open and close these gates yourself. But we all have to do our bit towards nature conservation. The strange part about Namakwa National Park is that I never once met anyone the whole time and I didn't have to pay to enter the park. Next chapter, Guruman. My journey is winding down now as I leave Springbok. My name for Springbok is Roast Potato Mountain City. I'm sure you can see it too. Along the N14 between Springbok and Pofada, there's a small mining town called Achenes, where you pass this monstrosity, the Hamsberg Mine Dump. At first I thought there was a mountain behind the dump.
It's the last night in my journey. Unfortunately, I couldn't book a campsite because they are fully booked. So I'm spending the night in some comfort at the Red Sands Country Lodge in Gurma. The place has some game on the property, but I woke up too late to see any animals. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me on this solo journey, the Northern Cape Escape.